The following is a presentation of Tomorrow's World. And greetings, friends. Welcome to Tomorrow's World, where you will gain precious insights into today's news and the real future of this world. My friends, what is ahead for 2010? What did the inspired prophecies of your Bible indicate about this coming year, 2010 and beyond? Many peoples and nations have personal ideas, but the great God who rules the universe has the power to reveal what is genuinely going to occur. Will Iran be attacked by Israel during the year 2010 if it hasn't been attacked even before you see this program? Many authorities think it'd be absolutely necessary for Israel to attack Iran in order to defend itself from extermination. As Israel's Prime Minister Netanyahu said a year or two ago, for many people it is a matter of geopolitical strategy. For us Israelis, it is a matter of survival. However, my friends, what does the Bible indicate lies ahead for 2010 and beyond? Will a terrible Middle East war really break out? Will there be a second wave in America's economic collapse? Will Americans experience not only money problems, but food shortages, water shortages, and class warfare and riots? How will this affect you and your loved ones? My friends, Jesus Christ said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And as many of you know, about one-fourth of God's inspired revelation is devoted to prophecy. Does it sound unimportant that God Almighty would devote one-fourth of his entire word to prophecy? How is it then that most professing ministers totally neglect that one-fourth of the Bible in their preaching and teaching? What does God's Word tell us about this? Turn with me to 2 Peter. Check up on me. Check up on all ministers. Prove what the Bible actually says. That's what you should do. Many people say the Bible says this or says that, and the Bible does not say that at all. Prove all things and hold fast that which is good. Turn to 2 Peter chapter 1, beginning in verse 19 in your Bible. We also have a sure word of prophecy Peter wrote, Whereunto you do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shines in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this, first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation, for prophecy came not by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. End of quotation from Second Peter. Now notice, my friends, what Jesus Christ himself directly preached. What did Christ say? Turn to Matthew chapter 24 in your own Bible and see what is called here the Olivet Prophecy that Jesus gave when he was talking to his disciples. Matthew chapter 24 and beginning in verse 3, as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming at the end, not 70 A.D., but the end of the age? And Jesus answered, Take heed that no one deceives you. The first thing Christ warned was false ministers. For notice what he said. He said, Take heed for many Many will come in my name, say, I am the Christ. They will talk about Jesus. They will come in Jesus' name. They will use Jesus' name. They'll say, I am the Christ, and they will deceive who? Many, not a few. We have had and will have more and more men and women professing to be true ministers of Jesus Christ, but many of them will pervert or water down the actual message of Christ and of the Bible. 
Turn to Hosea now. Turn back to one of the scriptures. You say, oh, this is in the Old Testament. Well, Christ quoted from the Old Testament over and over, and he called it the Word of God. In fact, that was the only Word of God extant when Jesus said, man shall live by every word of God. Turn back to Hosea chapter 4 and beginning in verse 1. Hear the word of the eternal, you children of Israel, not Judah, but Israel. For the eternal brings a charge against the inhabitants of the land. And he picks up the story down here in verse 5. The prophet shall stumble with you in the night, and I will destroy your mother. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The people of modern Israel are being destroyed for lack of knowledge. You say, oh, well, we have all this scientific knowledge. Yes, we sure do but we don't have very much knowledge of God. We have all these ideas of the new age and the occultism and everything else. Very few people believe in the word of God anymore, really believe in it. So we're destroyed for lack of true knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you for being priest for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. These things are beginning to happen right now, and they will happen with increasing ferocity, my friends. They're affecting your life now. Our rebellion against the true God and against his righteous commandments is setting us up for the coming great tribulation that Jesus prophesied. God is not mocked. Our lying, cheating, all these financial misdealings, our stealing, our adulteries, our sex perversions are a stench in the nostrils of Almighty God. America, wake up before it is too late. We want to help you. Come alive. Understand what's going on all around you. There's a reason for this. Turn back to Matthew 24 now, and let's continue here in Matthew 24, starting in verse 6, continuing this prophecy Jesus gave. He says, after describing false prophets and how they will deceive many, he says, and you will hear of wars, verse 6, and rumors of war. See that you're not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation. The Greek word here for nation is ethnos, or it can include nations, but it often talks about ethnic groups. We have one ethnic group in Africa fighting against another. We have one ethnic group in the Arab world fighting against another. All over the world, we're having ethnic strife, national strife. All kinds of wars are going to get worse. Kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, lack of food. We have that. Yes, entire areas are being wiped out all through Africa and other parts of the world because of lack of food. People are starving to death, tens of millions of them, right as I speak. It's not a small thing. It's over there, we say. But my friends, I tell you in the name of Jesus Christ, it's going to come here, right here in the United States and Canada and Britain. Wake up and understand. He says there will be famines, pestilences. What is pestilence? Disease epidemics. They will begin soon in the next few years, disease epidemics. And what will the doctors do? They're sincere people, most of them. They can't stop all this. You need to know the real God. That's your only protection, disease epidemics and earthquakes in various places. Just this morning, we'd heard about a horrible earthquake out in Indonesia measuring seven points on the Richter scale. They're going to happen with increasing ferocity. They're beginning to happen all around Japan and this Indonesian area around the Ring of Fire. And that Ring of Fire comes right back up through the Western South America, Mexico, and right into California. Earthquakes, and they're going to get worse. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Again, this year may be the time when the Israelis attack Iran, and this would set off a chain of, of, of violence all through the Middle East. For the Iranian rulers have threatened to exterminate the entire nation of Israel, so the Israelis have no choice. Either America does something or they'll have to. Yet an attack could easily set off an inferno throughout the entire Middle East, which would probably drag in the United States and Great Britain as well. It is going to affect you. It's going to affect the price of oil. It's going to affect your life. Whether you realize it or not, there is a spirit war which is behind all these other wars. These things are part of God's plan to bring us down, and God is allowing Satan to intervene as well.